Every time you submit a Cardano transaction, whenever you click on any of the links, they always send you to Cardano Scan. It's an extremely powerful site, but it can definitely be a bit overwhelming at first. So today, let's take a look at how to use all of the best features of Cardano Scan together. Welcome back to Woodland Pools. Today, let's take a look at Cardano Scan, one of the unsung heroes of the Cardano community that's been around forever and we all use every day. And I feel like most of us just take it for granted at this point how great of a site it is. There's all kinds of amazing features built into here. Some of them are kind of hard to wrap your head around at first, but want to take a look at all of them together. Oh, and don't forget to stick around till the end. We'll show you how to subscribe to your preferred stake pool so you can get regular updates straight to your Telegram account on block production, stake changes, things like that. So let's go ahead and jump in. Probably the best way to do it is to take a look from inside of a wallet since that's usually how we get sent to Cardano scan to begin with. And let's start off by inspecting a transaction. So let's go to send. We're going to send a test transaction here to our Woodland Pools address. Let's go ahead and just send three ADA. And now before we even submit this to the blockchain, we can see what our transaction ID is going to be. So let's go ahead and copy this and let's click on sign. Okay, so it's submitted and it's pending. We don't yet have it on the blockchain. And if we type this into Cardano scan, we can see the transaction is not found. And that makes sense because it has not yet made it into a block on the blockchain. Now there's a new feature that they added that will let us get a little more insight, but we'll look at that in a second. But for right now, what we wanna do is we wanna take a look at a transaction that has made it onto the blockchain. So let's give this a second to actually make it onto the blockchain and then we'll continue on. Okay, cool, so it is now on chain. So let's come to our transactions list and go to our history. And here's our transaction that we just sent. Here's the transaction ID, and we now see that it actually is linkable. So let's go ahead and click on it, and it opens up Cardano Scan, and now we have a full view into the details of our transaction. We can see this transaction hash is that same transaction ID that we were talking about. Here's the block that it was put into, and this is actually really cool. If we click on this block here, we can actually see which stake pool validated the block that contained our transaction. So actually, we can go to pool.pm and take a look at this. So similar to, like for example, with our Aspen pool, how we validate these different blocks here, we see here that it was the Ada Vault that validated our transaction. So if we come here and do a search for Ada Vault in pool.pm, it's actually going to take a second for the block to appear here because pool.pm is going to wait until the confirmations are higher. So if we come back here to Cardano Scan, we can see the assurance of this block is only medium with only five confirmations. What this means is that's the amount of other Cardano nodes that aside from Ada Vault, which was the slot leader that propagated it to the blockchain, it's the amount of other Cardano nodes, and this is both stake pools and full node wallets like Daedalus, which does all of its own independent verification of transactions. Cardano Scan is going to wait to see a certain amount of confirmations from all of those other nodes before they mark it as high. And similarly, pool.pm is going to wait on the same before it says, okay, yeah, this is definitely going to be living on the blockchain forever. There's no chance of a fork being rolled back or anything because forks are normal and they happen all the time. So if we give this a second on pool.pm, we should see the block come in here once this assurance turns to high. So we're at 18 now. So let's go ahead and take a look again at pool.pm. Okay, so that took a lot longer than expected, but we can see here that this is the block that our transaction was in. With Ada Vault, there was 98 transactions with 20 Ada worth of fees, which is exactly what we see here, the 98 transactions, 20 Ada worth of fees. So it's pretty cool how we can actually see from the transaction itself, we can see the block that it was in, we can see the stake pool that did it, and then you can also, if you want, confirm on pool.pm and see the block that your transaction was in that was submitted to the blockchain. So now coming back to Cardano Scan, if we refresh the page, we can see that we're up to 43 confirmations. So continuing down the list here, uh, we can see the epic that our transaction was in, epic 342, and the exact slot that it was in the absolute slot from the beginning of the Shelley era back in 2020, the timestamp of when it happened, the fees that we paid, the total output, and this might be confusing, right? Because we sent three ADA, but the output says 6.66. So let's take a look at that here. And this is a function of the way that UTXOs work. We definitely need to do a tutorial on how UTXOs work and we'll link it below when it's ready. So look for that. But at a very high level, the way that UTXOs work is that they are unspent transaction outputs. And what happens is instead of just keeping track on like a ledger model of just like, hey, this is your total balance. Instead, these unspent transaction outputs, each one actually keeps a specific amount of ADA and all of that added up is how much you're holding. Think about if in your wallet, for example, if you had like a couple of ones, a five and a 20, the total amount that you're holding is 27, but you actually physically have 120, 15 and two ones. Similarly, this is how your wallet balances work together. And we'll take a look at addresses and balances in a minute. But the other piece about how UTXOs work is think of it how, for example, if you didn't have those five and those ones and you spent that $20 bill and you're buying something that only costs 
cost five dollars what would happen is you'd hand someone that 20 they would keep five and they'd hand you back 15. utxo is working the exact same way you can think of this utxo as a 6.831683 ada bill and then when you go to pay that you remove from it the three ada that was sent to this address and then you get back the change of the 3.66 that's left over. And we can actually see this here back in our eternal wallet as well. We can see this was our account that sent the 6.83 to an external account, the 3 ADA, and then the change that came back, that's why these are both in blue, to the same account of the 3.66. So the full transaction was 6.66, three went out, the change of 3.6 came back to us, and this UTXO was consumed, and these two new ones were created. Then the last thing that we look at here, this TTL is the time to live. This is basically when the transaction is submitted to the chain. This is the amount of time that the transaction can be alive for before it actually makes it onto the blockchain. This is a security measure to make sure that things aren't just living there indefinitely. You say, for example, when I submit this transaction at 10.05 a.m., I want it to be valid for three hours until 1.04 p.m., and after that point, if it hasn't yet made it onto the blockchain, go ahead and consider it expired. Cool, so that's all of our transaction details whenever we submit a transaction. But if we remember when we first started and we copied the transaction ID before it made it onto the blockchain, we saw the transaction wasn't found. And this is due to the fact that there's a slight lag between when you hit submit and you say, hey, I would like to send this transaction and you announce that to the network and when it actually makes it into a block and makes it onto the blockchain. That gap in between from when you hit submit to when it makes it onto the blockchain that gap there, it gets broadcasted to what's called the memory pool or the mempool. And the way that the mempool works is that you say, okay, I would like to submit this transaction. I'm putting it into the memory pool and broadcasting it to all available stake pools. The next slot leader stake pool will grab a bunch of those transactions that are waiting. It'll package them all into a block. It'll put that onto the blockchain and that's when it actually is on the blockchain. But that gap in between is sort of just sitting in this pool waiting to be picked up. And previously, from when you hit send until when it made it on the blockchain, especially if the network was congested, there was no way to know. Did it get sent properly? Is it waiting in the mempool? Was there an error with my wallet and it wasn't submitted at all? And it's kind of an anxious moment, right? Because you hit send, you're moving some funds, maybe a lot of funds, and then you go to inspect it and you just can't find it. But a really, really cool new feature that they just added. And the reason why I wanted to put this tutorial together is because you can now actually inspect the mempool in real time and see all the transactions that are waiting to be picked up, to be put into a block on the blockchain. So now we have full insight from when you hit send to when it goes to the mempool to when it makes it onto the blockchain and Cardano scan can help us visualize all of this. So let's do another transaction and take a look at how we can actually see our transaction sitting in this mempool waiting before it actually even makes it onto the chain. So let's do this again. Let's go back to eternal wallet. Let's go to send. Let's send another transaction to Woodland Pool's address. Hit next. Let's send 2.58 at this time. Okay, so now here's the important thing. We're going to be sending it from this address and let's just copy the first few letters of it. So we're going from this address to our Woodland Pools address. And again, we can now see in the UTXOs, here's the change that's gonna come back. And now the network is moving really fast. So we're gonna have to be quick here. So let's go ahead and click on sign. It's pending. We'll go to the mempool, let's refresh. And if we do a find for our address, okay, so the first one, the network went too fast for me and I missed it. But here, if we do a search here, we can see here is our address, 1Q5T, and it is going to 1QE9, which is right here, is where it's coming back for our change address. And so at least I think that's super cool that you can see in real time all the transactions that are waiting, including yours, to make it into a block, to make it onto the blockchain. We come back here to Eternal, it looks like it is now on chain. So if we were to go ahead and click on this transaction ID, yep, we can now see it is on chain, but we actually came here from the mempool transactions list first where it was just sitting and waiting. Awesome insight, huge props to the Cardano scan team. That is probably my favorite new addition to any of these blockchain insight projects. So very, very well done. And so now while we're talking about UTXOs and addresses and things, it's probably a good time to take a look at that. So if we come back to Eternal and we go to receive, we can see here a new address that was generated for us, and we can also see all of our previously used addresses that we use for other transactions. Cardano wallets let you generate multiple addresses, and each of those addresses can have multiple UTXOs sitting at them. And if you wanna see them all in one place, on Cardano Scan, you can take any of the addresses, for example, even this unused one, if I copy this, and we come into here, and now we can start using this search bar, which is a very powerful way that you can search for a transaction, an address, a block, all kinds of things. So let's paste in that unused address. And as expected, the balance in that unused address is nothing, right? But we can see that that address that has nothing in it is associated with this state key. 
And for the total stake controlled across all of the addresses for this stake key, we have about 35 ADA, which is exactly the balance that we have in this wallet. And we can come here and click on view all addresses. And we can see the ADA balance in every single one of the addresses controlled by this wallet. We can see here, here's a bunch of unused ones that have nothing. And here's the rest of the balances associated with this wallet across all these different addresses. But if you were to use a wallet that has only single address mode like NAMI or Jero wallet, those don't generate multiple addresses for you. They only have the one. So if we come to our Jero wallet and we copy our single address here and we paste it into Cardano scan, we can see as expected that we have the balance, the total balance that's reflected is exactly the same balance as what Jero wallet is showing. But more importantly, if we go to view all addresses, is only just the one address that's holding everything. And by the way, if you're using Eternal Wallet and you don't like having to deal with all these different addresses, you can always come to settings and you can come to single address mode and turn this on and you'll be able to track all of your balances just on one address. It also makes accounting easier. But this is now a decision that we were able to make and something we were able to decide to change to make our lives easier based on the granularity that was provided to us by Cardano Scan. But okay, before we get to our last section, we're gonna show you how to use Cardano Scan to subscribe to your favorite pool to get all kinds of updates. Let's go to the Cardano Scan dashboard and take a look at what we have here. So, okay, from the Blockchain Explorer here, we have the same search bar here where we can search for any of these different things. We can see all recent transactions that have come through. Yours would have appeared on here when you sent it. You can see all the recent blocks that have come through, all the different pools that have validated the bundles of transactions. We can see ADA's price and the market cap, the total amount of stake pools, the total transactions that have happened. I really like this here. There's an epic countdown clock. So it tells us we're in Epic 342. We are 75% of the way through it. It's showing the slots tick away in real time. There's one slot per second. And it tells you exactly how long until the current Epic ends. So whenever you hear about different projects saying, hey, we're gonna do such and such thing at this Epic boundary, on Cardano Scan, you can come and see which Epic you're in and exactly how long you have left to move your delegation over to be in the snapshot that happens at that boundary. And everything that we're seeing here is on the main net. A lot of times you hear about projects that are doing testing on the public Cardano testnet. If you wanna get any kind of visualizations to the testnet, you just click up here and click on testnet and you get all the same information on the public Cardano testnet. Another really cool thing that they have here is you can come to blockchain and protocol updates and you can actually see all the different updates that have been happening to the Cardano protocol at the lowest level. For example, the increasing in the block sizes that we've been talking about with all the scaling updates that have been going on. You can see all of these things as well. Really, really cool stuff. And they're constantly adding all kinds of cool features. We'll definitely let you know as those come out. But okay, let's take a look at how to subscribe to your favorite pool and get updates on blocks and all different kinds of things. So if we come to more and click on Telegram bot, so we get this little pop-up here and we click on send message. So that's gonna open up Telegram. It's gonna give you a little introduction, which for some reason it's not showing here. But then what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna type slash start to start the conversation with the bot. And now it's gonna tell you things that you can do. So let's do slash subscribe to subscribe to a pool. And now it's gonna ask us for a pool's ticker or their pool ID. So for example, if we wanna to subscribe to Aspen, it says we've successfully subscribed to this pool. You can manage the notifications that you get for the pool. So here right now we're subscribed to Epic updates at the end of every Epic, pool parameter updates, changes to things like fees and things like that, uh, updates on delegators that are gained or lost, blocks as they come in, updates every day at the end of every day, so you can get updates in the end of an epic and also at the end of every day. And all those things are on by default and you can configure them however you'd like. If I go back here, you can see, for example, we've been subscribed for a while. Aspen got a new block here. Epic 341 was complete. Here was the stake. Here's how many blocks were minted. Here was a new delegator that came in. So you can customize this however you want, but it's a really cool way for whatever pool you're subscribed to that you can get information on how the pool is doing. And you don't necessarily have to be hitting up the pool operator or going and like checking a different site like pool.pm. With this Cardano Scan bot, you can get these updates in real time. So yeah, for the Cardano Scan team, keep up the great work. For everyone else, let us know what your favorite Cardano scan feature is or if we missed something that we should have covered and we'll do it in a follow-up video. And if nothing else, we'll see you next week.